easy now. Papa got oh, this, make it happen. Oh, yeah. Welcome to a special edition of Seahawks Man to Man, a YouTube exclusive. My name is Michael Sean Dugar. I'm here with my co-host, uh, Christopher Kidd. Follow us both up on the Tweet Machine at Mike Dugar, M-I-K-E-D-U-G-A-R. Still verified. Shout out to Elon uh, on that. Chris, holler at him. What is good, everybody? It's your boy, Christopher Kidd. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at CKIDD206, and that's CKID206. We got to do a, a Patreon episode or something so we can get you some bread to buy you a blue check. <laughs> Man, I mean, honestly, if I really wanted to, I could buy it. But at this point, I couldn't get it because I worked with this, with the Athletic or KJR. But the funny part is when KJR switched to 93.3, they lost the blue check. Because you remember, they were 9.50 a.m. and they had the blue check. When they made the switch, I couldn't verify that they were a verified account. Meanwhile, with The Athletic, if you don't have a subscription and they're trying to verify that you work for this organization, they can't verify that because they don't have a subscription to The Athletic. So I've tried. They just don't have the means to be like, yeah, we can't verify you work for The Athletic. Well, get a subscription then. And you can see that I do. <laughs> you got to buy. You gotta, you gotta, we're going to get the people to help you out, man. Buy a, no, like it's, it's, like it's okay. At this point, I'm just going to live my life as a non-member of the verified Twitter. It's okay, because now I have the option, too. I can see comments from verified users and the peons like myself. <laughs> oh, you can? And you're mentioned? Yeah. yeah oh. they, they, so they have that option for you now. And it's not like people are hitting me up with blue checks all of a sudden, but I can right. now see that and separate it. So I feel like I'm in there. Oh, nice. That is yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. Right. So maybe we don't. Maybe we don't need it then. Yeah, but it's all good. If you guys want to chip in, we need to get Chris the blue check fund. I'll set up a way to do that. Uh, anyway, we're coming to you. This is our bonus episode, third one of the week. Uh, all three have been me and Chris. Uh, so it's working out here for y'all. Um, this is where we do our standout plays uh, from week 13. You know, the Seahawks beat the Rams uh, with a game winning drive from Geno Smith. Um, so Chris is going to go offense. Uh, I'm going to go defense uh, with my plays. Break it. My plays are good plays. Um, Chris, you got a good play too, right? Yeah. I Here's think the- so. I think I, I like my play. Yeah. Oh, it's meant like positive because the, the, we could, oh, we could go yeah. either way um, in in this game. Uh, you want to set it off on offense? Let's go ahead and kick things off with the offense. I will I don't mind doing that. I think for one, it was a great Play call by the Seahawks. Shame Waldron. Great execution. <laughs> Funny we say execution. What was our last one about? Oh, simple stuff, man. Just executing. Great play. It's funny. I- I've actually ran this in flag football uh, multiple times. So I'll go ahead and, as you can see, I have it on the screen. Second quarter, 954 left. Third and four. So four-yard score touchdown. You could run it here. You could do a lot of things. But the Seahawks are going to come out in 12 personnel and with this scenario, 12 personnel, you'll see they have Noah Fant. They'll have two tight ends. So Parkinson, bottom of your screen, you'll have Noah Fant, Ty Lockett, DK Metcalf on the right. And then, as you can see, DJ Dallas in the game, you're running back. So that will be 12 personnel. They come out with trips to the right. The Rams are in their nickel defense. We're just, I'm not going to even show you guys the other view because it doesn't show the full view. We're just going to stick with this one. So... Right now, it, it appears that the Rams could be in man. Bobby is – We're gonna. Wa- I'm just going to run it through. I'm just going to watch the play develop and watch Noah Fant, your, in, your most inside receiver, tight end here, beautiful corner route, easy money. Geno, probably his easiest throw of the day. It, it looked very simple. And it's the execution of the play because what happens is the Rams are going to play cover one robber. All that is is man. everyone's manned up. And then you'll have your safety in the middle. Bobby in this scenario, who is in the middle of the screen, right near the R for the Rams, he is going to be spying Gino. When I, I'll, I'll pause it once the play starts developing, and we'll, we'll go through the process of it and how Noah Fent gets open. So play is called snap. 
You can see Parkinson is going up against Jalen Ramsey. Good matchup there. Cool. Noah Fant. I mean, look at where he's running right now. If you were, if you didn't know football and you just was like, oh, he's going to run straight to the defender and look for the ball. He ends up hitting a nice move and going to the corner of the end zone. But also look at Tyler and DK. DK is going to break inside. Tyler's going to break out. And all this is doing is if the defense doesn't communicate beforehand or even during the play, it can cause miscommunication and a guy can get wide open. And in this scenario, Noah Fant tends to be the guy that's wide open. A lot of times teams like to defensive teams like to pass off defenders. In this scenario, no one gets a pass off. In fact, two guys end up going with DK, which was probably the what, what they wanted. So in this scenario, I paused it. You have two dudes that are hovering around DK. You have Ty Lockett, who arguably you could throw a nice little pass in the flat and get him in the end of a touchdown. And then you have the DB who was like, oh, shoot, Tyler's lock Tyler Lockett's wide open. But in man-to-man -man in this scenario, there was a miscommunication. One dude was supposed to stay outside. Was he supposed to follow? Whatever the case may be, it didn't happen. And as you can see, Noah Fant runs the corner route perfectly. You can just call it a simple out route from the inside if you really wanted to. That's really all it is. It's a nice route from the inside, farthest inside position, and he comes all the way across and goes out. I don't know how easy it could be, but that's pretty much it. It was very simple. I love that route. I love this play. And the Seahawks, they might have used done this a couple of times. But another interesting fact about this personnel group is that the Seahawks run 12 personnel 30% of the time, which leads the NFL. And then in the red zone, they run it 25.5% of the time, which is sixth most in the NFL. So this is something that you, if you've watched a lot of the film on the Seahawks or you just watch the game, they do a lot of this concept a lot. And sometimes it might be DK wide open. Sometimes it might be Tyler Lockett. You pick your poison. And in this scenario, the Rams didn't communicate on what they needed to do. And this, again, results in an easy touchdown for Noah Fan. I mean, watch it again and watch how the play develops. Two guys stick to DK. Can you blame them? <laughs> DK is a, a magnet. But, okay, you got to play your – stay on your man. Results in a touchdown if you don't. So I really like this concept. I really love this play. And it's really simple. <laughs> it looked like – Anyone could run this. You could put, you know, seven-year-olds out there and say, hey, man, I need you to line up here, run at the defender, then hit an out route. I need you, the next position that will be the two receiver, I need you to go across the middle, and then the third receiver, or excuse me, Tyler Lockett that snare would be going out, and then the furthest receiver, I need you to just drag across the field and hopefully you get sucked in a defender. And kids at six years old, someone on defense is going to make a mistake, and you're seeing it here in the NFL. A guy made a mistake, and Noah Fan is wide open in the end zone. So that's my offensive play, film breakdown, standout plays from Week 13. Just a simple concept, and simple concepts sometimes result in touchdowns. And there you have it, a nice easy touchdown for Geno Smith, who is, as we talked about last Sunday, he's still cooking. With the cleanest pocket he'll probably ever have, too. You oh, yeah. <laughs> pause, it on the, look, pause it on the pocket. Like pause it on another, the, another good point, Mike. Look at yes. the pocket. <laughs> no pocket pressure. Crazy. I mean, I don't even think Gino has to step up really. No. Like it's just it's probably the cleanest pocket he'll have all year in the red zone. Like it's this is the effect of not having Aaron Donald. Like this is one of those, you can just feel it. Like look, look at that. <laughs> Dog. There is no one near Gino Smith, man. He, uh. can, he can do whatever he could do, whatever he wants, man. And I think even if Ernest Jones, who passes off Noah there, even if he runs with him. That's the beauty of having 12 personnel with a tight end that can run. Yep. Um, that's still a mismatch between Noah and Ernest Jones. Oh, Ernest Jones is a good player. I think he, he picked off uh, Derek Carr uh, on third, in the Thursday night game. So, yeah, no, that, was a, that was a great play by Noah. I like that in real time. Too. I was like, that was a good design. Yeah. Shout out good. Shane for drawing it up and probably expecting the Rams to probably go, man, here. Let's test them out and see if they're going to be able to communicate. Because at worst, you have DK inside. You can throw a laser to him. Hopefully, you can catch it. <laughs> We've seen DK drop some passes. Or you can find Tyler in the flat for an out route, and then your last result is probably no offense. That route takes a little bit more time to develop, obviously. But as you can see in that clean pocket that we showed you, he could he could have went to another option if he needed to. That's how much time he had. But, Mike, let's look at the defensive side of things because I know you got a couple of plays that you want to break down. 
Yes, uh, I do. I do. Um, also on your play, though, that's an example of gravity of star players, too. Yep. You see that with the Raiders right now. There's guys running all over Devontae, <laughs> and it's just leaving cats. Wide open. <laughs> yeah, leaving other cats open, you know, with Devontae. Justin Jefferson has that effect, too. Um, the, the Seahawks' run defense has been bad, um, so I've just wanted to um, – Explaining why it's bad is a little trickier than I think we have time for in this particular segment. But I do think there's a common thread on when the Seahawks have been good against the run. And it's been there's been two things. Uh, It's been penetration up front, which is that was the case during that four game win streak. And it's they're really not getting a ton of that, um, at least consistently in this this, three game stretch here where they're like the worst run defense in the league since week 10. They went from like one of the best from week six through nine put it this way from weeks one through five they're one of the worst weeks six through nine they're one of the best and now weeks 10 through 13 they're back to being one of the worst it is just complete extremes on either side they're either shutting down guys like saquon barkley or getting run all over by josh jacobs and rashad white and the rams put up 171 on them so it's it's very jekyll and hyde with the run defense but the thing that has been interesting when i looked at the numbers and some of the tape is like the seahawks actually get a lot of run stuffs which are are tackles for no gain, which I'll show one as well. But where they're not getting a lot of uh, t- uh, impact plays is penetration in the backfield resulting in tackles for loss, particularly in this uh, this little stretch here. They're not a very good tackle for loss team. And the key to tackles for loss, as we'll show, hook the Ryan Neal, uh, the all-22 uh, angle, the TFL uh, angle. Like in this one, uh, can I control it? Yeah, I can. Um, so in this one, you'll see they're back doing their kind of single high thing uh, like we've seen before. Um, which is which is something I think me and Chris talked. What Chris was that Tuesday or our Wednesday podcast that we talked about that we wanted to see them do a little bit more of. Like the two high stuff is cool, um, but you're usually outgapped in the run game, and it just can be hard to consistently just stop guys from that two high look. So we figured they're going to have to do you know put a brick, that's another guy in the box, probably going to be Ryan Neal, basically playing the uh, Jamal Adams role. Um, so that's what you get here. But the key on this is the penetration. And it's why a guy like Kachina Nuosu, uh, number 10, bottom of the screen there, should be a pro bowler this year because these are the type of plays that can help get the Seahawks off the field. They've just been few and far between. So they're like, all right, Mike, our run defense sucks. Like, get Cody Barton out of there or whatever, Jordan Brooks. Like, no, no, no. I actually don't think they've been the, the problem lately. I just think there have been too few of these plays. So I'll run this through. I watch you Chenna Nuosu on the bottom of the screen there. Shoots the gap. By the time Cam Akers gets the ball, he's basically fucked. Uh, and that leads to Ryan Neal and Michael Jackson combiner for, I believe this was like a loss of one or something like that. The key is, is this penetration. That's what these guys need more of. Can you go to the end zone view for me? Because what I think what's been really good uh, for the Seahawks as well. If you notice the front, right? So they got, they got Bruce, Brian Monet, Shelby Harris, and Shana Nuosu. They don't have like the five man, like bear front that we've seen that has like Al Woods, on the nose and like usually when you think of like that front that's like oh this is their run stop in front and they've actually had trouble this season with the this this four man front they've been getting their asses run on uh quite frequently uh here which is why you've seen them switch which is why you've seen in previous games they've had uh snaps where they got the bare front so that's five guys up front and don't even have cody on the field it's just jordan and then they're basically a nickel like a big nickel uh, it's called the uh, I looked. Uh, I asked Clint, Chris, what was that package called? The penny package. Uh, penny package, yes. Yeah, called the penny package. Um, but you and they're doing that because they're, when they run like these type of fronts, they'd be getting run on bad. Um, but the reason they can run these and stop the run sometimes is because you got you're basically still gapped out, gapped out, man. You have every gap accounted for because you bring in an eighth guy uh, in there. And I'm like, Chenna makes this play, but this is what they need more of. And I think this is going to be. The key, because otherwise, when things are getting to the second level, they're just not really there. Like the the Raiders game was a really good uh, example of that, and it'll be a problem against the Panthers this this week too. If the runs consistently get to where Ryan Neal's at, or get to a Quandre, or get to a Kobe, not to say those guys can't tackle or whatever, but it's just hard because they're in tough positions. And if they do take a wrong step one way or get stiff armed or whatever. That's how you get 86-yard game-winning touchdowns and shit like that. Uh, so this is the end zone view. Again, watch Chenna uh, on the right. The Rams running their jet sweep motion like they do. Um, I swear the Rams ran like 10 plays against the Seahawks. That was it. <laughs> they, they ran like 10 plays. That was it. The, the uh, little 
Um, I'm going to just write it while I'm talking. The, uh, I don't know if you guys all watch on YouTube. The Seahawks put out like their little um, all access uh, videos. Uh, it's like 13 seconds, 13 minutes or whatever. If uh, Quandre Diggs in this week's uh, all access, he breaks down the defensive huddle pregame and he's like, we know what it's going to be runs and boots. So let's go stop it or something like that. I was just like, wow. So y'all knew that was coming. <laughs> and still got hit for 171, uh, mostly on runs and boots. But when you have plays like these, this is what they should aspire for. Um, and some of that is just taking the chance, right? I didn't get a chance to uh, ask Uchenna if he saw something there or not, but he's had a ton of plays like this where he has, where he's just like, you know what? I see something, fuck it, I'm going. Uh, and you can see, look at this. By the time Cam Maker get the ball, number 10's in his grill, uh, the puller's out of position. Uh, they, who they got coming across the uh, formation? Number 18. Sprawling you know, neck. Yeah. How do you, you got his name down and I just can't remember it. Say number 18's name. Say it again. Scroll neck. Scroll neck. I gotta look it up because I know that's not right. Let me verify. I'm about to say because you're on it. Scow Ronek, excuse me, Scow Ronek. Yeah, like his name got one vowel in it, and that's it. <laughs> and it's like nine letters. <laughs> I swear it is it's way too complicated for me to try. I'm glad. I'm glad you're on that. But you look at like Cam Akers. By the time he gets in the back, uh, by the time he gets the ball, he's screwed. This is important because we mentioned it on the previous show. This the Seahawks have been one of the worst teams in the league when it comes to yards before contact on defense like teams are getting like a yard or two past the line of scrimmage before they're even getting touched this play they're not right and the, it puts a lot of pressure on the edge because the edge guys are who you're going to see get the one-on-ones like look on this play i'm gonna run it back again look at the just a mess that shelby and and al are in or excuse me that's brian monet but look at the mess that they're in. not to say they're playing playing it bad i'm saying that they're taking on multiple cats like look right here you can't even see Shelby because there's two dudes who weigh 300 pounds on them. Right? The one-on-ones that you're going to get are the guys who can shoot and take more chances, I think, are going to be Chenna. They're going to be Bruce. They're going to be Boye Mafe. They're going to be Vi Jones or whatever if he if he plays, whatever. Like, And I think a lot of what's going to help their run defense is these guys consistently taking advantage of beating tackles with their speed, um, shooting gaps, taking those chances, uh, beating tight ends you know, across the face. Like That's going to be – that's going to be really big because they can do it, that these plays have been few and far between. Uh, it's not that the DBs can't tackle, linebackers can't tackle. It's just you got you need this aggression to happen more often. Can you pull up the, the Al Woods one for me? Like, it's the same thing here. I just wanted to use this play. It's the same same type of situation. You see Ryan's in the box. They got eight guys there. Again, the Rams only used one personnel grouping all year. <laughs> they really only use 11 uh, personnel. Uh... Crazy. They really don't use – they put it this perspective for you guys. The Rams have used 12 personnel on 10 plays this year. 10. That is out of like insane. 750 plays. They're running 11 personnel on damn near all of them. They haven't run a snap of 13 personnel all year, which is three tight end. Like it's pretty crazy that they just stick to one shit the whole time. But watch Bruce right here. Uh, as you can see, it's basically the same guys in the personnel grouping for the Seahawks, except we're just swapping Big Al uh, for Shelby. And watch Bruce here on the right against the tackle. I'm going to run it through. 35-year-old Bruce took, meow, still getting it done. And obviously, Bruce doesn't make the play, just like Chenna didn't make the play. What does that do? Force Cam Akers to have to basically adjust on the fly. When he adjusts on the fly, it goes to a DB. You got Kobe right there, and then he runs away from Kobe and then runs right into Big Al, which – is quite the business decision right there. Uh, but you see what happens when penetration makes the play. Now, I think this wasn't a TFL. This was counts as a run stuff. But the concept is still the same. Like They're going to need more wins up front. Because if you uh, – I think it was the Raiders game when Pete was mad about the run defense, he was like, we just lost the line of scrimmage. And you right. like when coaches say shit like that, this is what they mean. Here, this is winning the line of scrimmage, whether you're going against a tackle, a tight end, or whatever. You need this. This is what is what you need, because um, I think again, watch watch Al uh, and watch Shelby. Like they're going against big ass dudes. Multiple. Look at this. Look at Al and Shelby right now. They are both double teamed. Right? You need guys to win one on ones. I think in the way they've the, that they're setting this up, uh, you need your guys up front who are getting one on one matchups to go win those. And when they do, it makes life easier for everyone else. When they don't win those, when they, or if somebody doesn't get off a block. That's how you're seeing guys get screwed. So when you're looking at the run defense going forward, I mean, there's a lot of intricacies in who has to spill and fit 
and all these other words that I don't really feel like breaking down in the time we are kind of allotted for this particular segment. I want to show you guys what should happen on a lot of these plays. And Bruce is going to get double teamed and stuff, and he's going to get cracked by receivers sometimes. Like every play isn't exactly the same, but it's unrealistic to count on because I know run defense people think about the interior D-line too. That's why everyone wants that kid from Georgia. Uh, yep. What's his name? It's Car- For last name is Carter. I can't remember his first name off the top of my head. Dion. I think it's Jalen. I think it's Jalen. I'm guessing. Don't ignore me. <laughs> I, think, I think his name is Jalen Carter. Um, but like the reason they want him is because you think, okay, we get run stuffer, blah, 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 we can make it happen. But this is why edge guys are so important too, because they're in certain schemes, you're gonna your Puna's gonna get double teamed, Quentin's gonna get double teamed, Shelby's gonna get double teamed, Al Bradman, they're gonna get double teamed, and the one-on-ones are gonna be on the edges sometimes. Um, and if those guys win, there you go. It's uh it's easier to just make make shit shake up, up front. And then there are going to be times where you want uh, your individual interior guys to win, too. There's another play I could have thrown in there where Shelby just moves the center into Cam Akers for, like, a gain of, like, one yard. I tweeted that uh, that clip. So there's some of that, too. But I, th- I think the key going forward, at least in some aspects, is, hey, man, you guys on the edge, when you're one-on-ones, when you get them, while Al's taking up a double, while Shelby's taking up a double, while Brian Monet's eating up a double, get that penetration – in the showtime, then you won't get 160 yards, 170 yards like that. I think the Seahawks' goal should should be around like, depending if the team has a running quarterback, maybe like 115 yards total. Like that should be like I don't know what their benchmark is, but for me that would be around it. You allow more than that, more than like 125 ish, you're screwed there. How can you do that? Bring a guy in the box when you're one on ones. There you go. That's going to be big this week, Chris, against the Panthers. The Panthers are going to run that goddamn ball. Yeah, we talked about it. Literally said, you know, bring a guy in the box and your fat boys, get some penetration and make everything else easier for your linebackers and nickelbacks and corners to make plays. If that doesn't happen, we'll see a result of maybe another career high for maybe Devontae. (laughs) Deontay. Excuse me, Deontay or Shubba. We just – I don't know how many times – I mean, I guess an interesting stat would be able to look and see how many career highs teams have had when the Seahawks' run defense might have been struggling. How many times they give career highs? This I know, year, and, I can tell you all of them. Oh, I know. I'm talking about in past years because I know it's always been something. Whether the I remember during the Legion of Boom era, tight ends for whatever reason yeah, they tight just, ends would go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and now it seems to be the running backs with this new defense and what they're doing seem to just have. They just have a they have one issue. I guess all defenses can't be great at everything, right? But if there's one nugget that's an issue for the Legion of Boom, it was tight ends. <laughs> they they were just like dog. You guys in the seam for whatever reason, man. We that cover three, it, it it's a perfect. It's like the cover two hole between the corner and the safety. When you play cover three and a and a tight ends attacking the seam, you know the linebacker has to get enough depth and your safety has to come up quick enough to make a play. And if it doesn't happen. You can have plays where they're a big shot there, and if broken tackle happens, that could be a touchdown. Long story short, the run game is definitely a problem for this defense. And to your point, bring that safety down in the box, fill those gaps, lay by else make a play on it, and we'll see how it goes Sunday. Yeah, the safety, I think, being gapped out gives your guys more opportunities to take those shots. Um, I think on both of those plays, it looked like Bruce and Chenna took shots, like, yo, I see something I can. I'm going, I, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get a chance to ask Bruce Chenna this week, but that would be my pres- uh, my assumption there. Even if it's not, um, even if that's part of the scheme, that's good too. Jump in there, and make, make it play. up. <laughs> yeah, like make make, it, make a mess. Yeah, they have freedom to do that. Those two in particular is why I chose them. Is Bruce and Chenna are veterans, even though Chenna's like 25. He's literally 10 years younger than Bruce. That's crazy. <laughs> um, but like the veterans, you know, Chenna's in year five. Like they have that freedom to be like, hey, bro, see something, see ball, get ball. You know, yep. like they, they they have that freedom in that scheme. And I think those guys are going to be key. Boy, Mafe, too. Um, he just played like 10 snaps in this game, so I didn't get a chance to pick him. But, like, those guys are going to be key. And I do think that bringing a guy in the box is going to have to be the norm uh, in this scheme, man. Just trust Michael Jackson, trust Trey Brown, and trust Tariq to cover. Because you got to – when you can get run on, you can lose to anybody, you know, which is why I picked a, the run defense this week because that's going to be key this week and going forward. Because the thing about getting run on – if one team sees it on film, they're going to try it the next week uh, on you. Like, Panthers are like, all right, they can run on it. If the Panthers run on these guys, the Niners are going to be like, showtime. We rerunning it on you, too. So once you stop it, it can be a deterrent 
um, for your offense, but you got to stop it first. So hopefully the Seahawks can do that this week and stop it because, boy, Chris, it'll be real nasty in Seattle on Sunday if they lose to the Panthers. Yeah, don't won't have much to say on that pod. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd be – we're just gonna we gonna let it all be questions. Like, all right, what do y'all want to know? What do y'all want to know? We will answer those if that happens. But I don't think it will. We both picked the Seahawks this week. Um, so there we go. Those are standout plays uh, from Week 13. Shout out to King Gene and Noah Fent for their touchdown and the execution on all parties. Uh, shout out to Chenna and Bruce for the penetration they got in the backfield that made those TFLs and run stuffs happen. Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, locking in with us for our bonus episode each week. We appreciate all the feedback. We appreciate everybody who tunes in, who says, hey, look at this player. Can you look at this? Whatever. We appreciate all that love. We're going to try to bring it to you uh, each week. Next week will be tricky because they play on Thursday Night Football. We'll keep you yeah. posted uh, on that. We will. We'll keep keep you posted on it. Um, but maybe we'll drop it later in the week or something like that. Maybe over Either way, appreciate you guys for tapping in. I'm Mike. That's Chris. This is a bonus episode of Seahawks Man to Man, a YouTube exclusive. We'll catch y'all later after the game on Sunday. Peace.